Hi, I'm Alton Gansky. Welcome to another episode of Typewriter Tuesday. And I have something very special for you today. I'm going to show you a typewriter that is not an antique, it is not vintage, it's not even classic. It's a near modern uh, typewriter. Some of them are still being sold under different names uh, throughout the world. And I've had to do a little bit of investigating and call on people for help who can give me some more information about what I think is a rather mysterious typewriter. So stay with me, I'll show you what I mean as we look at the Olympia Traveler C. Stay tuned. It's Typewriter Tuesday. Let's journey into the past to see what writers of old used to use to ply their trade. What kind of mechanical beauty does Al have for us this week? Hi, thanks for staying with me. Boy, isn't this a slick looking little device, huh? Slick cover. You know, when collectors of typewriters come across this word Olympia, and especially when it has this nice little Olympia uh, insignia, this logo, we get a little excited. Our hearts begin to palpitate a touch. Uh, and that's because Olympia is known for making absolutely fabulous typewriters, uh, especially their older ones. This one, however, may not be as spectacular as uh, most of us would like. This is an Olympia Traveler C, Traveler spelled with two L's, C. And to the best of my knowledge and the best research I've been able to do, it is made in China. In fact, it's produced under uh, other names, brand names, including Royal, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But let's just, first of all, take a quick look at this thing. Uh, you'll notice it's plastic. But let me say something about plastic. Sometimes plastic gets a bad rap. Uh, this kind of plastic is very durable. When you get a scratch, you don't see a color change because the color's all the way through. Uh, it's lighter. So it has a lot to uh, commend it. Uh, Unfortunately, there have been a lot of typewriters and other things made with plastic that uh, aren't very durable and they're badly made. And so uh, the plastic gets a bad reputation for that. This is meant to be a portable typewriter. It's meant to be light as can be. Uh, so it's easy to carry and that means they've made some sacrifices, which I'll show you as we go along. But you can see that it's kind of space age. It's wedge shape. Uh, it's kind of fabulous looking. It's real sci-fi looking. So I kind of like that. Uh, and to get into it, you simply push these forward, and if you're lucky, this will come up. And we'll set this aside over here, down at the bottom, and there it is. The Olympia, Olympia Traveler C, as you can see here. Uh, and it is a nice looking typewriter. The keys are nice. They're black. Uh, it has the red speed spacer, which we'll uh, talk about in a little bit. But it is just streamlined all the way through. I have seen these with a black bottom down here for contrast. That's very nice. Um, and it did come for a while with the larger uh, carriages, larger platens. That was available. Uh, and all the way around, it's a, it's a nice looking typewriter. But that's not to say it doesn't have its faults. It certainly does. In fact, when I first got this and I bought it on eBay for $41 is what it cost me. Um, and in some places of the world, you can still buy these. Uh, and there are a whole bunch more money than that. So just for the looks and just to have it, and because it was an Olympia, I thought $40 uh, or so was a good deal. Uh, the vibrator wasn't working, so I made a note of that. The vibrator is this little device down here. You notice the ribbon rises. The thing that raises the ribbon is called a vibrator. Uh, and it wasn't working. Well, I have that working now. Uh, and uh, I made a comment in my notes to myself that it was a lousy typer, that it looked great and was a lousy typer. Um, however, I have found that it types okay, uh, which we'll probably demonstrate in a little bit. First, just take a quick view. Uh, you can see the great lines on it. It almost looks like the business end of a, a bulldozer at times, except it's got the uh, slick white. Uh, to get information on this, I had to ask around. I belong to a couple of typewriter groups. And so I went to those guys, uh, the gurus, and I said, what do you know about this typewriter? Can you help me out with it? Because here's my problem. We have no idea where it's made. It doesn't say anywhere uh, that I can find in a typewriter. And the only thing I haven't done is take the solid bottom off and look at the uh, under part of it to see if it says uh, where it's made. Uh, it is almost universal agreement, though, that these were made in China because we know that Royal made one with the same mask, that is the body shape that we see here, except it was all black. Uh, and so it's sort of it's the evil twin 
of this typewriter. Those were made later. This is a 1990-something. I can't tell you the uh, actual year that it was made. I cannot trace it back uh, with that kind of detail. Uh, I do know that some of these were made in uh, 2012, but based on the numbers that I have, this was probably made in late 1990s, maybe 95, 6, maybe even just before we got to 2000. Uh, so it, it's much younger. It is the youngest typewriter I have in my collection of 45 typewriters. Uh, and I, I love the looks of it, and it does type all right. Again, uh, as I said, it was made to be carried, so a lot of cutbacks and weight uh, were made, including some of the metal. Uh, it is not light, but it's a lot lighter than you might expect with that. Uh, some of the places where they made the cutbacks, as you look at the paper bale, you notice there's no rollers on it. It's just a flat piece of metal, and even that, it's a little thinner than you'd expect, the gauge, uh, as well as all the material to the sides, and as are all the little levers. They're a very thin gauge. Even this rather simple paper support. No scale on it. That's it. Doesn't extend or anything. That's the whole nine yards right there. Uh, it's a little thinner than you might expect, as well as the margin settings. Now, the things you use to set your margins are uh, very thin metal. Uh, so what metal is in here is pretty thin, and that goes for the guts of this thing. Uh, the metal inside is very light, and I'm going to try to show you the inside. I say I'm going to try to show you because to get the faceplate off and the ribbon cover off, it's all one piece, of uh, formed plastic, you have to <laughs> you have to get strong with it. You have to muscle it off. When Royal did theirs, the Royal version uh, it was called a Scrittori II. Royal Scrittori II. Uh, it came with a manual, and that manual uh, said that the way you get this off is to grab it by the front, put your thumbs on the platen. And I know you're not going to be able to see all this, but put your thumbs on the platen and pull towards you, and I, I've done this a time or two and almost got a black eye, but we're going to give it a try here in three, two, and one, and it does not want to come off. You also have to appreciate the genius of requiring your customers to put their fingers on the ribbon to be able to get this thing off, and it's a bit of a problem, and there it goes, finally. And it sounds like uh, I broke it. I didn't, I don't think. No, I didn't. Uh, it is held together. Uh, with this plastic, there's a little plastic uh, pressure fitting on each end down here, and they fit in this hole. And you force them in, <laughs> you guide them in, and the front hooks well, with this. There's a little lip in here that fits over the edge of the bottom casing. So we set this aside for a bit. Now you can see inside this thing. And uh, it's really a simple design, but it is functional and it works. Lots of plastic, plastic on the ribbon spools, what the ribbon spools ride on is plastic, and then all the metal uh, is thinner than you would expect. Uh, so they're saving on weight and probably saving on money uh, with it. it uh, the operation is fine. All the keys work just nice, nicely. Um, and this particular one was really fairly clean. I've been messing with it some, so I've got it a little bit messy, but uh, it was fairly clean inside. I can tell from the platen that it has uh, been used uh, because you can see the vertical stripes where the, uh, as the bar rolls, uh, that is the platen rolls up, uh, the marks over time wear on the rubber. This rubber is really pretty hard and probably should not be that hard for as young as this is, but there it is. It has uh, most of the usual stuff to go with it. It does have a paper bale, which works. doesn't, again, have rollers on it, but that's not that unusual in uh, these late models. Uh, they were cutting back somewhere. Some of typewriters, just so you know, look like they don't have rollers, but if you flip them up, they have rollers embedded in the bottom. Uh, so look for that before you uh, give up on it. Off to the side here, there uh, is the line spacing lever. And it does a couple of things, really. You can get a single a line and a half and uh, 
double and even triple spacing, but this also serves as the carriage lock. The carriage does not move because I have the carriage lock on. And to do that, you have to push this all the way to the back and then move uh, the carriage until it locks in place. So now I have to release this and the carriage will move. So it's good that they have the lock. Uh, with portables, you want to be able to lock uh, that carriage so it doesn't get uh, snapped around much. Uh, you can't tuck this out of the way. It will push down and over for when you put the uh, case, put it back in the case. Uh, so it has those things. It, in addition to those things that I've just uh, described to you, it has all the usual things that you would expect. Um, but with one big difference, which I'm going to highlight in, uh, in a little bit. But you can't move the carriage back and forth just like you would normally do. You can change the line spacing over here. That's fine. It does have uh, a release uh, for um, when you push that back. The paper goes in a little easier, then you can uh, kind of lock it in place. Uh, it does have a zero setting so that you can just rotate this without uh, the ratchet working. So instead of going line by line, you go whatever you want on that. So it is it's very useful in that. Now, why am I showing you this? Uh, and, and this was the reason why I wanted to talk about this one, is this is unique in uh, yet another way. And that is the keyboard. When I say the keyboard now, I'm talking about the keys on the keyboard. If you look at the top of the two, you'll see that there is an at symbol. Uh, and that's fine. Top of the eight is an asterisk. That might remind you of something. It's a uh, keyboard for computer configuration. Many of the other typewriters, uh, even that are modeled with this body style and um, these guts, these innards, uh, don't have that. And uh, I've been wanting to do a piece on typewriters for writers, uh, things that would benefit those who are writing fiction and nonfiction. And it's going to be a little hard for you to see here, but over here in this key, it's something that's rather remarkable. It's the only typewriter I have that has this. But the quotation mark and the apostrophe, which also serves as the single quotation mark, is there off the little finger. And it's very much like what you get on a computer keyboard. Uh, most typewriters, almost all typewriters, we can say, don't do that. They put uh, the quotation mark on the two and the apostrophe on the eight. Um, so that's rather unique. And if you're a writer, that is, you're going to be writing dialogue, you really want to have quick access to the quotation mark because every bit of dialogue begins with an opening quote. And in the United States, that's a double quote. Uh, that is the two lines. In Europe, it, I believe they begin with one. Uh, and their quote within a quote is two. Uh, but here in the United States, uh, US English, uh, the double quote begins a piece of dialogue. Uh, open quote, do you want to go to the movies with me? Question mark, close quote. Uh, then if you have quotes within quotes, you use the uh, single marker, which is the apostrophe. Uh, so th this is rather unique in that, uh, that it has this off to the side rather than at the top. And that is one of the things I really love about it. Uh, it would make a writer's life, and I'm a writer, I've done about 50 books, so that would make my life a lot easier uh, with that. A couple other nifty little things. It has a machine gun spacer. It's not what it's really called. It's this rapid spacer, but uh, it sounds like a machine gun when you use it. Uh, for rapid spacing, like in the filling out of forms and the like, uh, that's really uh, nifty. It does have a tab. Okay, so not all that special, except they're all fixed tabs. You can't set your own tabs. And these are set at uh, 10 character um, spacing. So that means you sometimes have to adjust your margin to get your first tab. See how little that went? Now the next one will go 10 spaces, 10 spaces, and so on. In most contemporary writing, uh, it's five spaces for that first line indent. So sometimes you'll see uh, typewritten pages, and they will have them spaced much deeper than what we're used to. Uh, it's Those kinds of things change. But you're kind of limited on that. So. Uh, a bit handcuffed there. All right, I'm going to try to put the top on here, and this is uh, could turn into quite a comedy routine, but let me see if I can do this again. 
uh, because it's kind of iffy here. I'll look at that first time. That worked out nicely. Well, there it is. That is the Traveler C. It carries the Olympia name, and that's because many typewriter manufacturers would sell rights to their name and to their logo. That's not unusual. If you go back through some of the other uh, videos I've done, you'll find a Royal Safari 2. And it wasn't made by Royal. It was made by another company, and I, I believe it was in Portugal, uh, where it was manufactured. So Royal sells the name. They have to, I, I would imagine, I would hope so, they have to meet certain standards for it to carry the name. But when they do that, it's not unusual for uh, things to change. So Royal will do one of these also. They'll just do it in a different color. They'll give it a different name. Uh, and so uh, there's that. We have the tensioner off to the side. A little lever you move up and down. And uh, it uses bichrome ribbon. So uh, red's at the top, which I always find interesting. Uh, makes me want to flip the ribbon over inside the typewriter uh, just for conformity's sake. But uh, it's marked red at the top, and that will cause the ribbon to rise higher so that the red uh, will hit the paper, the red ink. Uh, you have the middle in which the ribbon does not rise at all. The vibrator does not work with that because you're doing stencils. That's what it's for. Uh, though you'd wonder by this time why they would be just still doing stencils in the late 90s. But nonetheless, it's there. And, uh, and then down for the black. Uh, backspace, margin release, all those great things. So what should I tell you about this? Well, it, uh, it types all right. My, my first comment in my notes to myself uh, when I first got this was it's a lousy typer. Uh, but it's not as lousy uh, as uh, I, I had let on. Uh, this was a page I used uh, to test some of this. We'll bring it up close here. And so I did the red, um, and I was messing around trying to get things working. So I was going to do the quick brown fox sorts of things. Um, this HHH, HHH, HHH is a way of testing the alignment uh, to see if uh, the carriage is properly seated and if a capital letter is rising too high or too low compared to a lowercase level letter. Uh, we do all of those things. Um, and then I was testing spacing and so on. So it actually, it turned out, and here we have some actual uh, typing that I was doing. Uh, this is a Traveler C. It was made in the 1990s, but I have no idea where, where that is where it was made. Um, I've since found out that it's almost certainly China. Uh, it has been suggested that it was made in China. There's no label on the typewriter uh, or the case, and so it's a bit of a mystery. But over time, I've been able to uh, run that down. So it's not, uh, it's not too horrible. Uh, in the typing. And as with all typewriters, there's an adjustment period uh, where you adjust to the typewriter itself. So not too noisy. Quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The lazy dog bounces on the quick brown fox. And so it works actually quite well. Seems a little bit better. And there you have it. The Olympia Traveler C from the 1990s and on into the uh, early 2000s. Uh, many of these were sold uh, through the mail. Uh, and sometime back, if uh, they were flown much, you know, they had magazines that uh, uh, sell things and uh, you could buy them through the magazine. So, mail order. Uh, mostly, and they came in a cardboard box. Uh, so that was because it has its own case, so it would just be shipped in a cardboard box. Uh, very nice 
little typewriter. I think I'm more impressed with it than when I first got it. Solid bottom. Uh, keeps stuff from falling through. Uh, easy to access. Feet are quite small, but that's okay. Um, easy to access screw so you can take the bottom off if need be to get to adjustments. So, all in all, pretty good. Well, this is Alti Gansky. This has been Typewriter Tuesday talking about a bit of a mystery typewriter, but we think we've solved the mystery. And that's the Olympia Traveler C, probably from China, and um, sold the world over. And uh, variations of this, I think you can still buy, uh, probably overseas. But again, thank you for joining us. Uh, look forward to uh, having you watch the next one that we do and uh, get out there and save a typewriter. Thanks again. Bye for now.